Keep California Cowgirls from vanishing. Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Training our horses and miniature cows in ranch versatility. Penny, Rusty and Susie, our bull and heifer. Roping Rusty with Morgan Horse, Sammy. Training Eve to work over her haunches with a motor cow simulator. Training Eve on a cow roping simulator. Sadie practices over the haunches with an ATV mechanical cow simulator. Pulling slack. And Susie's coming my way because she feels the pressure behind her horns. We are working on getting Morgan Mare Semi ready to harrow the compost over the corridor, which will serve as the test site for growing Timothy Hay at Minmore Farms. Ready to pull a harrow at our other field where we have on the far west side a corridor set up. I'll show you when we get there closer with the camera. A corridor set up with already uh, delivered piles of compost from our very own compost bins. We compost our manure and, uh, and then we take it to where we're going to want to use it to grow things. Now Sammy is in her harness and uh, we've got the tug straps on and the very first thing I want to do with Semi's tug straps is to try something that I similarly tried with my Zebus in my uh, session yesterday with them and it's in a, a show that uh, I'm uploading on my website and this is it I'm gonna take one side of Semi's tug straps and bring it down to where a single tree would be. Then I've prepared an inch and a quarter piece of PVC here, about three feet long, with a connector and a clasp. And I'm going to see if I'm comfortable with the position of that tug strap on Semi's back legs. It concerns me when I see tug straps and tug chains low on the back legs. It's fine if the horse is responding well to commands and being left rein, that is thinking, not being stressed. And right now, I just have to show you that uh, Semi thinks this is time to take a nap. So <laughs> this is uh, the place where she grazes a lot, at least five hours a day, every day. Um, so it's not near the creek bank where all the critters are. Uh, I think she's going to be much better behaved over here. So far, we're, you're seeing it. This is body language of a relaxed horse. <laughs> Closed eyes, head low, feet still, hooves still. Now, I'm going to walk up to her with this white piece of PVC. She's not crazy about the color white, but I think she's going to be okay. And I'm going to let her investigate it if she wants to wake up for a moment. I'm going to take the tug strap down, which presently is uh, with a quick release clasped up to the harness collar. And I'm going to let it go on the ground behind her. I want to see if my inch and a quarter PVC will fit it. And then I'll come back to the camera, because again, we don't have mics today, and neither do we have a camera operator. I'm going to tell you if I feel, in my judgment, that uh, where those tug straps land on Semi's back legs are an acceptable place. Generally speaking, I want tug straps on the back legs to be no lower than where the leg meets the hip. However, oftentimes I see tug straps much lower than that. Now, Semi woke up. 
And that's because we're in an urban rural setting and there's some kids across the street making some noises. But she's used to that. She grazes here all the time. So I think she's not stressed. She's just woke up. It's all right, Sam. It's all right. I'm hopeful that it, the idea is going to work, but I have to do a little more fitting. The carabiner that's on the end of that rather wide, stout leather tug strap is too big to fit into this inch and a quarter PVC. So I'm going to look into getting a slightly smaller carabiner or create a slightly larger in diameter. PVC piece at least three feet long and then I'm going to try it again because it looked to me like if I could have a, gotten the tug strap through this piece of PVC that uh, the tug strap enclosed in the PVC would have landed on Semi's back leg somewhere in the vicinity between where the leg joins the hip, which is my objective. So we'll work on that before next session. But that doesn't mean we're done today in today's session. In today's session, we're going to walk around with Semi, who's being led with her harness on, her full harness on. Uh, we're going to walk around the perimeter of this entire field. We're going to watch her body language. We're going to see if there's something that upsets her. We're going to get close to the piles of compost that we're going to ask her to eventually harrow with that harrow. That harrow is designed so that it will attach to a single tree. We put in that very long bolt in the front. I'm not even sure this kind of harrow is going to do the job, but it's a harrow that I already have. And if I need a different harrow, like a chain harrow, well then I'll get one. Because our idea here is to farm, to farm hay. And we're going to do what we have to do in the most economical and safest way to do that. We've already bought the Timothy hay seed, which we're going to plan on planting in our test site corridor. And the reason I chose Timothy is that it's very hard to buy from my feed store here in Santa Cruz County. And uh, I love Timothy hay. So I thought, well, let's see if it'll grow. Plus, I am pretty sure that Timothy, Timothy will regrow again next year. Um, it doesn't have to be planted every year. So uh, we'll see, because we've got irrigation ready to go here this summer. And then, of course, there's the winter months that we have to deal with. But I know that Timothy has grown up in Oregon area. And I know that our weather is even a little gentler in the winter than up there. So, okay, very quietly, and without making you dizzy, we're going to follow Katie, who's taking Semi, on a walk here. We call this HVD West. There are all kinds of human noises here. On the other side of the perimeter fence that Semi's walking towards, Somebody is playing football or something of that sort. And uh, Semi grazes here, so I suspect she won't be concerned by it. We want resistance free compliance to our requests. And here is the corridor made with a perimeter white vinyl fence and then some portable panels and the piles of compost. And up ahead, you see that there is irrigation 
on this fence. Let me slowly pan the perimeter. There's the irrigation riser. We have several of them along that fence. And here comes Semi again going the other direction. We do everything both directions with our horses and our cows. Her body language looks very good. Now you see her ears are toward the noises that she's hearing. She was trying to figure out what she was hearing because remember she has her blinders on. Now we're going to do some ground driving as well here with her using the reins, not just the lead line. But we'll wait until we have a third person so that somebody can be at our head, somebody can be at the reins, and somebody can be operating the camera so we can show you at the moment how it's going. Very nice. Why don't you make your way back now, go down the middle. Let's see what she says about going down the middle, not with the security of a fence nearby. Take her toward that Harrow, which is on the ground, which he has not shown any stress about it. But you know, maybe she just didn't notice it. Maybe she's seeing it now from a distance and it looks like a different kind of possible predator. And right beyond the harrow, besides having our manure bins, we have a nice stout tie ring in a railroad tie tie post that's uh, two feet, at least two feet into the ground with concrete. We're going to keep this harness. The harrow and all of the tools we need for frequent sessions because as I've said many times in the past, we need to frequently ask for compliance to our requests and with repetition. And because I have Morgan horses who are very versatile, we're going to farm here at Midmore Farms and we're going to show you how we do it. www.urbancowgirlchannel.com I'm going to show you a bit of the untacking because sometimes you can have some problems with untacking. I don't think we will with Sem. That's Shadrach Triton Semi, my stallion's legacy. Is she going to be spooked by taking the collar off, spooked by taking the saddle off, spooked by taking the britchin off? You'll see, because I'm showing you. So far, so good. The collar has very nice stainless steel hames, and it does have a buckle on the top, so you don't have to pull it over her head, although Semi's okay on that, too. She's standing nice at her tie post with a rope halter on and a 12 foot yacht rope lead line, tie line. There's noises back here because we're putting the tack away nearby her, but she's not spooked by that either. So let's do the britchin next. I'm a little bit concerned about the harrow being so close by, but because I'm not seeing any stress and I have quite a bit of confidence in Semi and Katie, I'm going to say we're going to just leave that harrow there and let Semi see it as we untie her from the tie post. It's all right. Very nice. Very nice. Now off will come the harness saddle.
good girl Sam. And shortly we'll just untie her. Let her investigate the harrow on the ground. And then take her halter off and open a couple gates and let her herd mates and her get together. Which they're used to grazing together for hours every day, rain or shine. She's uh, chewing, licking and chewing, which is a good sign. She's looking at it. See, she doesn't have her blinders on now. She's checking it out. We don't want her pawing because she might get stuck in it. She's not. Investigation. It's an obstacle. It might be perceived as a predator, but not today. Not by Shadrach Triton Semi. We'll see how she behaves, though, when we ask her to pull it. final ultimate test of her disposition. Just let her go. Be, be ready though to move the harrow if she does come over and start pawing it. If she's not sure about something, most horses in fact will do this. They'll paw it. They'll try to figure it out. But nope. No problem. Okay. Can you it, lift it up? Just show how heavy it is, which is not very heavy. So when we ask her to pull it, she definitely should be able to do it. It's just a matter of, will she be willing to do it? And we'll show you. Sammy pulls the ABS log. I took a two inch PVC, cut pieces, oh, a little over three feet, put the tug straps of this harness into those PVC pieces. We've got our ABS single tree connected to the tug straps. Uh, Aaron is going to go and hold the lead line, if you would. We did this with Semi in our last session without the drive lines because we didn't have enough people. But today we do, so we're going to see if, first of all, we're not going to put anything on the ground yet, but we're going to give Semi the opportunity to uh, walk around this pasture where she's going to be doing some farm work for us with those tug straps through the PVC holders, protectors so to speak, and with uh, Josh holding up the single tree for now. So we're going to let Katie pretty much direct Semi with her reins. And remember, Josh, when she does G and Ha, you're going to have to move a little fast to stay behind her. Good. So far, good. Ha. Ha means to the horse's left. Josh has to move a little bit quickly to stay behind the horse. Aaron is being careful not to be in flea path if something does spook Sammy. And to uh, have a loose lead line, because the lead line is just for safety right now. Katie is doing the direction with the drive lines. And if she gets spooked, just pick it up and be ready to release it. Yeah, she is a little more spooked. Make big circles. If you're going to make a circle at all, make them big. Because those PVCs are going to touch her. We don't want her picking up her foot and getting it caught. So far, so good. I still don't like the way the PVCs are so low. I see it all the time on RFD. I see farm horses and pulling horses with their tug straps down so low. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to solve this problem. Well, we decided to take the white PVC off, and instead we're going to try to give 
Semi the opportunity to feel the tug straps, to desensitize her to them. So um, pick up the, uh, Josh, pick up the single tree, hold it, and uh, step to your left a little bit so she feels it, and then step to your right. Okay, but you see she has to feel it lower. We need to make this a desensitization for a realistic occurrence. Right, it has to be lower. She has to feel it lower part of her leg because that's where it will be touching her as uh, the single tree slides on the ground. All right, now let's uh, move out again, keeping the single tree up as a first step, then putting the single tree down. Step up. And I just saw a Chris Cox special oh. about using a pair of horses to pull a sled that had a casket in it. And it made me nervous because the tug straps were down that low. I guess uh, there's really no mechanical way to avoid that. What you need to do is get your horse desensitized to what they might be concerned about back there from all these straps. She's fine now. As they do a hard turn, I'm going to have Josh put it down, but hold on to the chain in case he has to pick it up again. Oh, they're doing a G turn. Okay, when she's coming back now, let it go down, Josh, very quietly. And hold on to the chain. Okay, I know you have to crouch a little bit for that. Okay, we're going to step up towards the camera. Now she might, okay, ho for a minute. Here's another hazard. It's too close to her back legs, don't you think? I don't know. I think maybe we want to extend the tugs with some chains like we did with the pair driving. Uh, I like the tugs, uh, if you're using them on a cart, are fine. They're up on the cart shafts, but for pulling like this, I can uh, I can see it's only about two feet away from her from her back legs. I'd rather have it be um, maybe three feet away. So I'm going to attach some chains to the end of those tugs that then will be attached to the single tree. That'll be our next step in our next session. But we're going to finish off this session with uh, one more challenge. I'm going to turn off the camera and turn it back on and I'm going to show you what the challenge is going to be. Well, here's the next challenge. We've got the ABS pull log for training hooked to the single tree. Now, we're not, not going to do very much with it today because I really do want to get that single tree farther back behind Sam's legs by extending the tug straps with some chains or uh, uh, straps of some sort. But just to finish off this lesson today, I'm going to go where Katie is standing. Josh is going to handle the log. Aaron is still going to be at the head. And Katie's going to ground drive semi just a little bit. We want to make sure all these pieces fit together and that semi does not get scared by any of the clanking, or any of the pulling. I'm going to move the camera back so you get a view as we go forward. Next time we'll also have my old cart whip here as an arm extension so we can tap her because it's really not a good idea to use the reins to get that go command. We show you every step of the way. 
we made a little bit of progress today and uh, now we've got to do this many 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 times after I've lengthened the tug straps with some chains and uh, or straps and then come out here with enough helpers so that if there is a spook we can deal with it and of course this whole field is enclosed in fences and just to recall our main objective is to get semi ready to pull a harrow in that corridor that we made with some portable panels because we have some of our homemade compost ready to go there we need to spread it out and then seed it. We're going to seed it with Timothy Hay, irrigate it this summer and see how it grows. At the next session we added dog collars to the back of the britchen thus giving us a way to keep the tug straps away from the bottom of the rear legs. Sammy certainly looks relaxed. Look at all those signs of relaxation. Licking and chewing, head down, back leg cocked. I have the single tree on the ground and I have my extra dog collar on both sides but I'm just going to show you this side. Holding up the tug strap on the back side of the britchen as well as on the front side of the britchen. Got it down on the ground. Dog collar, carabiner, tug strap. Now if I add the chain that I'm going to add, about two foot of chain, right here, I feel that the single tree can be farther behind the horse, which was another problem, and that the tug strap will much less likely hit the horse at the bottom of the leg. And the way that we will proceed is to get at least one other person, if not two, out here to help us. And we're going to try to pull that single tree with the tug strap and the dog collar with a little uh, driving whip in our hands to get that forward motion. Somebody at the head and somebody at the reins and then we'll be ready to practice 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 our cast of characters Sadie and Eve Sammy Rusty and Susie Heifer Calf Sela. For more information, www.cowgirlchannel.com. <laughs>